Hello everyone, thank you for checking out this video. You are with Coach Jordan from Territory Academy. Right now, we are going to be solving this question together. For this lesson, we will not only be using Pythagoras' theorem, but we will also try to be making use of certain algebraic identities, as the two are inextricably linked in most questions. Right. So first, let us try to construct this right angle triangle that they are talking about. So it looks something like this, where my perimeter is 56 and my area is 84. So let us first label our sides, let this be A and B, and by Pythagoras' theorem, we should be able to express the hypotenuse, right, which I'm going to label H, in terms of A and B. A squared plus B squared, square root. All right, so this is what I'm going to be writing alongside our diagram. Okay, so therefore, we can craft two equations, one showing that the perimeter is 56, the other one showing that the area is 84. So our perimeter, making use of that info, would be a plus b plus a squared, root a squared plus b squared equals to 56. Now, unfortunately, the expression underneath our square root right now isn't a form that we can factorize, right? But if we do try to complete the square here, okay, we can see that we'll get a form of a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. And then since we added a 2ab, we have to remove the 2ab to ensure the value stays the same. All right. And now this is of a form that we can factorize, right? Because that is just a plus b squared. And then we will leave the 2ab outside for now. Okay. And we'll figure out a way to deal with this 2ab in just a bit. So now let us see whether we can craft an equation regarding the area. So we know since the area is 84 cm squared, that will be half times base times height, which is half AB. All right? And since we know what half AB is, simply multiplying it by 4 will give us a value for 2AB, All right? which will give us 336 over here. So substituting, okay, let's call this equation 1 first, and we'll call this equation 2. All right, so substituting equation 2 into equation 1, what do we end up with? a plus b plus square root of a plus b squared minus 336, because that's the value over here, equals to 56. Now, before we start squaring both sides of the equation to get rid of my square root, it would be a good idea to shift this aside first so that we isolate our square root on one side of the equation. So on our left-hand side, this is what we have. And on my right-hand side, I'll have 56 minus a plus b. So notice I left the bracket here unexpanded for now, and you'll see why in a bit. So squaring both sides, we have a plus b squared minus 336 equals to 56 squared. Now, we want to see this expression as a minus b. So our, our identity tells us that this gives us a squared minus 2ab plus b squared over here. All right, so this is the form we want to keep in mind. So minus 256a plus b plus a plus b squared. All right, so now we can get rid of this. So at this point, notice that these two terms are present on both sides of our equation. So they can cancel them out. And then we are left with this. 56 squared minus 2 times 56 gives us 112 a plus b. All right. So we'll shift our a plus b to the left and our constants to the right, leaving us with this equation over here. Okay, so 56 squared can actually, well, if you evaluate it, um, what it is, you'll get 3, 1, 3, 6. And then if we add both of these terms together, we shall get 3, 4, 7, 2. Taking 3, 4, 7, 2 and dividing it by 1, 1, 2, we'll end up with a value of 31. All right, so now we have a sum of the values of A plus B. All right, and recalling that 
since our half AB is equals to 84 from the area, AB is said to be 168, right? So actually we can sub A plus B into AB, but first we have to make either A or B the subject of the formula. So let's say A is 31 minus B, then we can sub A into AB. All right, so instead of writing it as A, we replace it with 31 minus B, multiplied by B to give us 168. All right, and you expand this out, and then you try to put it into a form of a quadratic equation, and this is what you'll get. So as of this stage, um, this form should be factorizable to give us a value for B, so let's see whether that can be done. Now, 1, 6, 8, we want to try and split into two factors. So given that this is negative 31, we want to try and get two factors that add up to give 31, right? And one of them that should come to mind is 7 and 24. Since 7 times 24 gives us 1, 6, 8, and they add up to give 31 as well. So hence, we can simply write this is equals to b minus 7 times b minus 24 equals to 0. And hence, solving for the roots of this equation, b could either be 7 or 24. Alright, now since earlier we stated that the sum of a and b is 31, if b is 7, a must be 24. If b is 24, a must be 7. So over here, you realize that the specifics don't really matter. All we need to know is that our perpendicular sides here, the shorter one is 7 and the longer one is 24. Alright? And therefore, if we were to draw our hypotenuse, we will be able to figure this out via Pythagoras' theorem. Alright, so 7 squared plus 24 squared, square root. This is the square root of 49 plus 576. And square rooting this will give us square root of 625. We should, we should no notice that this is a square number. And therefore, our hypotenuse is actually equals to 25. So therefore, we now have figured out the values for all three lengths being 7, 24, as well as 25 cm. And therefore, this is your final set of answers. So just to briefly recap, over here, after drawing the right angle triangle, we can express your hypotenuse in terms of A and B via Pythagoras theorem. And afterwards, since we are given perimeter and area, we can actually craft two equations in terms of A and B, all right? And the important step here is to recognize that we should be able to complete the square such that we introduce a form of AB into your equation, all right? And this is done because we know that we can make use of the area to get a numerical value for AB. Substitute that back in, and then we should be able to solve an equation in terms of A and B. All right, and then we can find those individual values, and finally use Pythagoras' theorem again to solve for the value of your hypotenuse. We have completed this lesson. Thank you for watching this video, and I hope you have enjoyed today's lesson. Goodbye, and see you again in another lesson. If you would like to learn more from these tutorials, please smash that like and subscribe button.